All right, guys, help me welcome Jake Conan on today. He is the number two producer in all of Family First Life, uh, currently a senior vice president on the cusp of hitting executive vice president and just an absolute stud. And, and we're excited to have you on today, Jake. How's it going, man? It's awesome, man. Thanks for having me. It's yeah, no be problem. A beautiful time. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. Well, well, let's jump in, man. Um, you know, let's get started and, you know, tell us a little bit about who introduced you to Family First Life. How did you hear about us? Obviously, a little bit about your background, and then we'll jump into kind of the meat and potatoes to help the agents out. Gotcha. So I went to college with Easton Patton, and so I was in insurance as well, different company um, out of Montana, and I saw him make a post, you know, on how much life insurance he sold in set his first seven months with Family First Life. So I called him and I was going to ask him for advice and it kind of just translated into uh, me joining forces. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So what were you doing before? Property casualty insurance, um, commercial insurance, basic liability stuff, home auto, farm ranch, all that. I uh, did a little bit of life insurance as well. It was more so fully underwritten though. There's lots of caveats that come with that. So, I mean, everything just made sense. I mean, this was so transparent. Got it. Got it. Okay. So you had some experience in insurance, kind of different lines of yep. insurance. Um, and, and then, you know, translated into this. Now, were you actively in the field like you are here at Family First Life? Or are you kind of sitting back in the office? I was always in the field, always in the field. We didn't have any leads or anything like that. I didn't have a book of business. I basically recruited myself onto um, this insurance agency. Uh, they, they let me do it after I hounded them for about six months. But uh, so I was totally being, you know, a pavement Pete. I my main move was I would go and I would find a business owner, basically compliment him, tell him I'm a, I want to be like him. And if you could please let me present in front of your staff, that's what I would get the bulk of my appointments, the bulk of my clients right there. So, I mean, 30 staff members was perfect, but I always tried to stay around that 50 mark. And usually I'd get, you know, three, four or five cli clients from that. Got it. Okay. Okay. So you, you were out there, you were door knocking businesses is what it sounded like. Yes. Wow. Yes. That was my main move. More people at one time. Got it. Okay. Well, so how long ago did you start with Family First Life? So I started full-time in June of 2020, went through contracting in April, and there was just a couple of things I had to, uh, you know, tie up before I could go full-time here. So yeah, June went full blast and didn't look back, man. I mean, this has been one of the best decisions of my entire life for sure. Awesome, man. Awesome. So if I'm not mistaken, you also hit Hall of Fame last year and you started halfway through the year. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. The just don't second guess it. It works. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's talk about that, right? Because I think, you know, what, what you have today or what we have on the call today, we have a lot of agents that are just getting started. We have a lot of agents that may have been here for the last, you know, 60, 90 days trying to find their rhythm. So talk to us a little bit about when you started, A, what that looked like for you. Um, let's talk about, you know, from a you know, a, a lead standpoint, how, you know, what leads were you running or maybe are you running now? If, if any of that has changed, you know, what was your mindset like about leads and actually purchasing leads and what that budget was? And just talk to us a little bit about that because, you know, you obviously came out the gate super fast. And so I think a lot of people, including myself can learn from that. For sure. Well, I mean, I, I just kind of looked around who I, who I was surrounding myself with. Um, everybody was moving very slow where I was at, but I mean, that, that month, the, the deciding factor for me was in April of last year, I asked him, you know, tell me exactly what you're doing and I'll do the exact same thing. You know, so that's all I did. Um, I started out with Facebook final expense leads. You know, we didn't have the instant internet leads at that time, you know, so those leads were, you know, anywhere from 24 to 38 bucks, depending on which vendor you were using. I always like to have between 50, 65 brand new uh, Facebook final expense leads. That, that was kind of my, my MO right there. Um, lucky, luckily, I had a credit card that I had a little bit of space on. So I was pretty aggressive with leads right away. Um, I just always wanted to give myself the grace to like fall forward, you know, instead of falling back. Like just same concept as if you were just opening up a restaurant for the first time and you have your grand opening. You want to expect to hit a home run with that grand opening, you know? So if you're understaffed and you don't order enough food, you don't have enough like greeters at the door, all that stuff. And then you have way too many people show up. You're not allowing yourself that opportunity to fall forward because there's going to be mistakes along the way. So it's just, I, I just took that same thing with the leads. You know, I want to have too many leads, more leads than I know what to do with. 
um, to give myself that grace to be able to make mistakes comfortably and have 30 appointments. Cause I mean, if, if I mess up one or two, you know, I still have 29, 28 appointments left, you know, same thing with a phone call. If I met, if I mess a phone call up, like perfect, I still have, you know, 60 leads left to dial. All I need is 15 yeses. That's it. Okay. So you said 50 to 60 Facebook leads when you started, is that per dial day? I assume that was per dial day. Yep. Okay. I and definitely then, did not tell my wife how much I was spending on leads right when we started. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's, it. It can be scary at first. It's kind of, it can be daunting, right? Um, so of those 50, 60, you'd book 15 of those appointments. Is that what I'm hearing you say? I always went for 15. Uh, I mean, just that you hear everybody preach 30 appointments a week. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to crank that up a little bit just, just to get more experience, more reps under the belt really quick. You know, so I would, I would always be kind of, 15 to 20 appointments every dial day was perfect unless it was a weekend you know and you wanted to run a power weekend that's you know friday saturday sunday um minimum eight appointments per day you know so those days you got to definitely load up a little bit more but minimum 30 appointments per week for sure got it got it so obviously having extra appointments allows you to have a little bit more room for error so you can still write the amount of business you want to write is what i'm hearing you say absolutely it's wild it's wild, but, that, but it's, it's true, right? It's so true. So, you know, you put the law of large numbers in your favor by just having extra appointments, right? So, so tell us now, what are you running? Are you still running Facebook ads uh, or Facebook uh, final expense leads? Are you doing something different? And then, you know, maybe talk to us because, you know, depending on where you are in the country, the lead availability might be a little bit different. So did you travel at all when you started? Like, talk to us a little bit about that. So that way agents can kind of get a feel of what you were willing to do or, or maybe even not do. Um, but the sacrifices that maybe you've made to increase your income and, and really get started here at Family First. So Julius, I'm from Montana. There's uh, one person for every seven square miles of the entire state up here. So, I mean, lead availability, not, I mean, I would be, I was salivating, you know, looking at the U.S. map, that heat map, um, especially out in the Midwest. You know, so out here, I had to be very aggressive with my travel. You know, I, I might get one full day of appointments in one town. When I'm done with that, I'd have to travel, you know, two, three or four hours to the next town that night to run my appointments the next day. And that's kind of how I attacked my, you know, my travel schedule, which wasn't really a travel schedule. That's just what I had to do to start out and be profitable from the jump. Um, and then recently, I mean, I moved 3000 miles away to Columbus, Ohio, open up an office out here, out there. Cause I mean, I wanted to go to those leads. I mean, there's not a lead shortage. Um, there's an agent shortage out there as well. So that, I mean, that's kind of why I did that, but, um, just kind of become a, a lead chaser, you know, if you will, it's in the CRM, the heat map is there. Um, put a little pressure on yourself as well to go on a travel trip or two, you know, run a, run a three day weekend, a power weekend. So, I mean, you force yourself to perform if you do that. And I mean, not to mention if you can get two power uh, weekends in, you know, every single month, you're getting two extra run days in every single month. And that's really going to boost your number. Okay. Your belief level is just going to go through the roof when you start doing stuff like that. Was that uncomfortable for you, Jake? Or was that kind of like, it seemed natural to you when you first started and you were doing that? It was extremely uncomfortable to start out. I mean, just from an income standpoint, I didn't have the capability whatsoever to, uh, to lose in a situation like that. So, I mean, putting that type of pressure on yourself and your, and your bank account, you know, that, that was definitely uncomfortable for sure, but it just kind of puts you in a different mindset almost like a, like a desperate mindset, if you will, like you have to make this thing work. And those were always the biggest weeks that I would ever have is the biggest pop weeks is when I put that much pressure on. So, so you had to pay the price, right? And what I hear you say is you had to pay the price. You had to get uncomfortable. You had to almost put your back against the wall to, yeah. to, to, you know, you're, you're in game time situation, right? It's fourth quarter. You got to win the game. What are you going to do? Right. You, you got to put up the shots. Right. And so that's what it sounds like you did. And you did it relatively fast, right? You ripped off the bandaid is what it sounds like. You didn't, you know, take months to figure that out. You, you did it you know, within a month or two, you started rolling. Right. And so, um, that's awesome, man. All right. So, so if you can, you know, we'd love to hear kind of what you do, you know, with your in-home, obviously you're, you're a stud in production, right? You're killing the game. Um, number two, like we talked about, um, in FFL currently. So if you can take us and, and help the, the agents on here, 
um, understand what you do from the time you get out of your car to the time you get to the door from to, to, to the table um, and walk us through till what you get to a close. We'd love to hear your word tracks, your mindset, you just your whole approach um, and, and be able to take that and, and help other agents. Okay. Uh, I mean, the first thing I like to do is just, you know, get my mind right to before the appointments even start, you know, whether that's a workout or whatever. You know, I'm sure everybody has seen a training day with Denzel Washington at the end when he's, you know, King Kong doesn't have anything on him. Um, I like to get in that mindset, you know, before I go into any of my appointments, because um, then you're walking in with just a presence, you know, and your belief level is just through the roof. Because, um, I mean, if you have conviction in everything that you say, your clients are going to have belief in what you're doing for them. You know, so I, I like to be in a pretty good mindset before the day even starts. But uh, I kind of assume the psychological approach, if you will, of, of like, a, you know, a coach in the house, you know, because a coach doesn't really we've all had some of those coaches where they've you know said one or two things and it really, really, really struck a nerve. And your coach didn't seem to care, even though you're getting emotional. They just want you to you to uh, perform better, whether it's, you know, take a step in the right direction. Look this way before you make a pass. Um, start throwing your chest passes from right here instead of your waist, you know, to get it there a little faster, put a little, little bit more snap in, but that's not how they would say it. You know what I'm saying? So for your clients as well, I mean, if we really believe that we're providing a service and we really believe that we're leaving families better off than when they found them, sometimes I, I like to take that approach as well. I mean, I don't really care what the clients think of me per se, as long as they understand my message. Cause I do believe that in every house that I walk into that I am going to leave them off better than I found them. Even if we got to have a, a little bit of an uphill, uphill climb to get there, you know, I'll, I'll grab them by the hand and take them up to the top, show them the views and head to the next one. You know? So I, I think that's a really big approach. Um, cause lots of new agents when, I mean, you're, you're kind of like a little bit, uh, apprehensive, I guess, if you will, with the manner in which you speak to, to, uh, you know, clients. And uh, I think the first time that you can put position yourself like that, that no matter what, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, or I'm going to say that, and that is going to, it's the truth. It's hard for me to say, but I'm going to say it, you know, like the first, the first time I heard, I'm going to think about it when I was in insurance, I was like, how can I not get that? Because that, that's just such a, it's, and I still get it. I mean, everybody still gets it all the time, but I'd, I hate think about it. I absolutely hate it because it's not a decision. And I mean, they, they're not doing anything good for them. Nothing good comes on my end. I didn't provide them a service because they didn't make their mind up in any way, shape or form. They're just thinking about it. It's like, okay, they could have thought about it without my help. You know, so. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so I like to, uh, I, I don't know. I like to put that out there right when I walk in the door and just let them know like, hey guys, you know, I'm here for the best interest of your beneficiary. Cause that's the most important person here. And whether they're here or not, I'm going to be their voice today. You know? So one thing I do not do is I don't do think about it. So I do yes or no decisions. Cause this is not rocket science. We're not splitting molecules here. We're protecting your daughter who has three kids who works two jobs, who simply cannot pay for your final expenses, no matter what, even though she's going to feel morally obligated to, I'm going to be her voice today. Are you okay with that? Perfect. You know, cause then right away, it's not like, uh, I don't feel like a salesman at all. I feel like I'm standing up for their beneficiary who's not there. So that approach right there, I think is going to set everybody, you know, set everybody up for success a little bit better. If you can get your mind right before you walk in the door. Um, basically my in-home is super simple. The whole entire structure. I walk in, I put my license on the table, direct them to the table. And I just, I turn into basically like a, like a taxi driver. I mean, Julius, if you were going to get in my taxi, I can't, I can't go anywhere until you give me the coordinates, the address and tell me where to, where to drop you off, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm in there and I, I like to spend, you know, maybe five, 10 minutes asking why I'm there. You know, I want to, I want to continue asking you questions until you basically tell me to stop asking you questions like Jake, that's why you're here. It's like, okay, perfect. Now we're on the same page, but uh, I want to, I do that because I want to have something really, really solid to stand on. You know, let's I role play that if you don't mind me. Let, yeah. let's, let's role play that a little bit. Um, you, you know, you're coming in. Let, let's do this. You know, I'm an internet lead. You, you sit down. Um, we, we got to the table. Let's just go through a little bit of that so people can get a feel of what those questions look like. And then we'll, you know, I think Perfect. that'll help them. So, Julius, what has you looking into uh, life insurance at this time? 
Um, you know, I just, I, I want to make sure my daughter's protected. If something happens that, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure. I wanted to see what the cost is. Got it. So this is going to have a monthly cost for sure. But, uh, as far as the protection for your daughter, what's her name? Bella. Bella. Does she have any kids? No, no. She's, she's young. She's, she's only young. 10 or got, soon to be. Got 10. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Bella's going to be your beneficiary on this. Yes. Okay. And is your whole point, is this, are you wanting to pay for final expenses? Or are you wanting to leave something behind for Bella in the event something unexpected happened to you? What does that look like ideally? Um, ideally, I want to make sure she's not struggling financially if I'm not here, because obviously she relies on me. Um, so that, that's kind of the goal. Okay, so Bella's 10. I mean, she's got a long life to live. I mean, do you want her to go to, do you want her to have the opportunity to go to college? stuff like that? Do you want her to have the ability to be able to pursue her dreams in the manner that you did? Um, yeah, I don't know about college, but I definitely want her to pursue her dreams and let her make that decision. And, you know, I, I don't want the finances to get in the way of her dreams. Okay. So if, the, if Bella's 100% dependent on you, I mean, who is she going to live with if you're not here? Her mom. Okay. Does Bella's mother have the ability to support Bella financially in the same capacity as you could if you were here? Um, not in the same capacity. She can support her, but obviously, you know, we equally support her. So, um, so it wouldn't be in the same capacity. She would stuff, you know, it would definitely impact Bella to some degree. What, what degree? I mean, how much, how much income would her mother be losing? I mean, how much support really would Bella be losing if you're not here? Um, 50%. So it's not that Bell is losing 50%, but you know, we share custody of 50%. Gotcha. I mean, 50% is a lot to lose. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. So basically what I'm hearing here, Julius, is we want to put Bella in a position that no matter what, if you're here or not, that 50% is going to be there regardless. Yes. Correct. Exactly. That's kind of, that's kind of it right there. I mean, I feel very confident about having a leg to stand on with that. You know, I mean, just keep asking until you can really dig down deep and you're both kind of seeing eye to eye. Perfect. Now that that's you money, know. Jake. Thank you for, for walking through that. I think that's helpful for people to see. Cause I, I know for me as a new agent, when I started, I, I didn't do that. Right. Like not even close. Now, obviously I've learned a bunch and I'm doing that more. And so the more we can have people do that on the front end, the much easier the back end is going to help them just making sure they can secure the sale and really secure the family more than anything else. So, all right. So you go through that and I'll take us to kind of the next step. You, you get there. Why you, you understand what, why, what you're there for. What's the next step that you do at that point? The next step is I, I just point, I mean, now I have my address, right? We're in, we're in the vehicle and now we can go, you know, drop you off wherever we need to go. So I just, you know, kind of tell you how we're going to get there. So Julius, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through basic financial information on you. Um, we're going to touch on the house, your shelter, any outstanding debts, whatever we got to do there, your health. And I'm going to get into some options, you know? So then of course, I'm just rolling through the client worksheet, mm -hmm. but like at the top of the client worksheet, I'm going to name your why something like your why is Bella's 50%. I'm going to write that at the top of the client worksheet and I'm going to circle it so you can see it. And I'm going to write it big because that's what we're doing here. That's why I'm asking you all this information is for Bella's 50%. So when you, when you do it like that, it's not on me at all. It's now we're here for Bella's 50%. So I roll through, I ask you all those questions. Um, once I figure out what product we're going to go with, I figure out what that 50% is income wise, like financially, you know, is, is that, uh, you know, is that 50 grand a year over the course of, you know, five years, so we're going to, we're going to start with 250,000 and that's going to be 50% for five years. Julius, is that okay with you starting right there as a face value? Yeah, that's probably a good starting off point to get an idea where we're at. Starting point. Okay. Because I mean, I want uh, everything that I show you. I mean, after we get into the options right there, everything that I show you numbers wise has to have a value attachment. It has to. So if $250,000 is 50% for five years, then the next year I might show you is, you know, what's, what's, uh, let's go 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go $500,000 and then $750,000. And I'm going to tier it like that. That's Bella's 50% for five years. Bella's 50% for 10 years. Bella's 50% for 15 years. 
So she's 10 right now. 15 years is going to take her out to 25. 10 years is going to take her out to 20. Five years is going to take her out to 15. You know, so, and then I'm going to show you price based off that. So if you don't like the price score, you know, to take Bella out to 25 with her 50%. Okay, perfect. So we don't want to take Bell. We don't want to give our, or uh, provide Bella 15 years of your 50%. Do I hear you right there? Okay, perfect. And I'm going to cross that off because I don't want to just throw out a number to you. I want you to have a, a, you know, an attachment, an emotional attachment to the number that I'm showing you. So then when I'm crossing off the one that's too big, it's almost like I'm taking something from you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I've never heard that before. That's interesting. So you cross it off because it's like, okay, obviously the customer is not on board with this one for whatever reason. So let's just take that one off the table. Yeah, maybe the maybe the 15, 15 years is like $750 a month. Mm. Like Julius, do I hear you right? You don't want to give Bella 15 years of your 50%. Okay, got it. I'm going to cross that off. Got it. Okay, okay. Because so I don't, I don't want to just lower the price. You know what I'm saying? There's no value there. It's like, okay, the $750 one is too expensive. Got it. So then we'll just go down and we'll start with a small one for 475. And that's going to be, you know, that's 10 years. I don't just want to give a number with no description of what the value is, it is that it's going to provide. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Guys, drop a fire emoji if you're getting value out of this. If you guys are getting value out of Jake and what he's doing in his in-home and how he's doing it, drop a fire emoji in there. Dude, this is solid. I mean, this is... This is the stuff where, you know, it, most people in their first year don't pick up these things and, and, and not because they don't necessarily want to, it's just, they haven't, they haven't figured it out. Right. Sometimes some people take longer. It took me longer to figure it out. Um, obviously, you, you know, you've been a student of the game. You've been in the, in the business for a while on the other side. So, um, but this is really good stuff. So what other word tracks or sales tips do you use in a home that helps you um, you know, either a help a client get to a decision or B, you know, just help you close a sale. Are there any other things that you do? So, I mean, you've heard that saying probably from your mother or father growing up, like nothing good happens after midnight, right? Yeah. Nothing good happens outside of the application, nothing. So get all of your efforts when you're showing numbers, of course, you're, you're already kind of there. Everything is going towards the application now everything. I like to show the numbers and move, and move quickly after I explain the value immediately right into the application. Because Julius, it makes no sense for us to even consider putting a, a 10 year plan in place to make up Bella's 50% if you cannot get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that you can get this. And that what that looks like is like if you're an Americo prospect, which I love Americo prospects, I'm going to run you through that health authorization. We're going to go through one page of personal information. You're going to sign a health authorization. That's going to allow Americo financial access to your past 10-year pharmaceutical report. That's going to come back and let us know if we can even submit an application for coverage. Okay. And by the way, Julius, can you please circle and initial that 10-year plan, the 50% 10-year plan for Bella there? So why do you do that? I want you to physically attach yourself to something. Hmm. Okay. So you have them circle it and initial it to, to almost like their commitment, like, okay, I'm in on this. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. Strong. I mean, I just want to get you as involved with the decision as humanly possible, you know, cause otherwise I'm just going to be like that crazy guy that's screaming at you across the table. You know, I want you to get involved with what we're doing. Please sign that and initial that. That's the plan that we're going to look at is that 10 year plan. We'll start there. Awesome. Wow. Okay. That, that's, that's powerful. I've, I've never heard that. And I'm definitely going to start using that like tomorrow. So thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So nothing good happens after midnight. And so nothing good also happen, happens after or outside of the application you said, right? Nothing good happens Absolutely. outside of the application. I love it. You got to get, you got to get into the application and get coverage in the first place. Um, and that's what we're, what we're there to do is protect families, man. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Brother. That thing. Okay. So that's money. And then what do you do to cement the appointment, right? So you're done, you filled out the application. Um, you know, everything's, you know, a, do you tell clients that they're approved in the home? Do you, do you elongate the sales process and give them a call back later? Um, what do you do to cement it? So that way, you know, you avoid potentially a chargeback. like talk to us a little bit about that. Cause I think new agents struggle with that, especially in the beginning. Um, so, so how, how can agents do a better job of cementing? What do you do there? 
So buyer's remorse, I think just addressing buyer's remorse right away, because we all, we've all had that, you know, whether it was walking into a car dealership and that salesman is really good. And with insurance and everything, my new vehicle is 650 and my budget allows for half that. Holy smokes, I'm going to be regretting that on the drive home, even though the leather seats smell really good. Um, so I like to address that and you can call it whatever you want to, but like afterburn, buyer's remorse, just the whole gist of that is, Julius, I want you to sell me back on why we just did what we did, you know? So I want you to understand it, you know, crystal clear what it's for. So, so I'll, I'll come back to the price. So Julius, we just went with that smaller policy, you know, the 475, 10 year plan, 50%. <clears throat> How can you justify $475 coming out every single month? Well, um, obviously I want to make sure if something happens to me, she's taken care of. So, um, you know, this is all about Bella, like you said. I feel solid with that. I mean, I wish, I wish I had you as a client every single time. But, uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm giving you a lay down. Come on. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, know, I love it. I love it. I'll take it all day. Just basically make, make your client sell it back to you and make them justify while you're there, that first payment coming out, the feeling of that, because until that first payment actually comes out, if you don't address it, they're going to be thinking about it because that first payment hasn't hit yet. So, all right. You know, so, so, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but what, what response do you get from your clients sometimes when you're having them sell it back that, you know, maybe I'm not thinking about that you have to, you know, coach them on, or you have to ask a question on. So walk us through that because obviously it doesn't sound like everyone's saying what I just said. So what do you normally hear? Yeah. And then how do you kind of coach to, to that? You know, I mean, typically it's kind of like a, you know, a, super, a mundane response, you know, like, oh, this is, you know, this is going to let my wife keep the house, you know, so that's why I'm okay with it. You know, Julius, remember, so you're, you're making all the money in the house. Your wife's been, you got four beautiful kids. Your wife's been, you know, raising your kids for the last eight years. She has no income. So if something happens to you, she loses the house, right? That's why we did what we did is we provided your wife with income replacement for 10 years moving forward so she can keep her income the same and not have the financial rug ripped out from underneath her feet. And of course, you're already approved at this point, right? I mean, I'm just going to keep cementing, keep solidifying that and keep saying that amount of money that's going to hit because I don't want them to call me and say, hey, Jake, you know, 475 just hit. Um, I, I don't know what we got to do something about this. I want them to say, you know, right then and there at the house. Whew, yeah, 475 wasn't planning on that, but income replacement. I, I mean, yeah, you're right, man. I got four kids. You know, I'm approved. We're good to go. I want my wife to be able to have, you know, 10 years of income replacement. So, I mean, just walk them through it. Keep coming back to that value the whole time. But I mean, really, that should take, you know, two, three minutes at the end of an appointment. Um, from that point, I like to, you know, I like to grab their phone. I would just say, hey, Julius, can I please have your phone for a second? I'm gonna put my phone number in, I'm gonna call myself so you can like physically see my phone ring when you call me and just let you know like, hey man, I do come with this policy. You also get me as well, just a nice little added bonus for free. Um, I will pick up if you call me. Okay, so, and are you putting their, you're putting your number in their phone? Yep. Got it. Yep, and then call me in the house. Are you, are you saving like a, a, you know, some kind of name? like Jake, the insurance guy, or you do anything like that? Or I don't know. I'm just asking. Jake from State Farm. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, man. I wasn't trying to brand another company, I, you know, so. I know. Right. But uh, no, just first and last name, just pretty simple. Um, okay. Just like your life insurance agent. You can put that in like the company spot. That's about it though. Cool, man. Thank you for all that. Uh, you know, we really appreciate you pouring into us. Um, we really appreciate you sharing your tips and, and what you do in the home and, and how you do that. So